Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Dr. Claudia Alberts, Planetics Researcher. And today I'd like to bring you an article entitled Planetics and the End of Civilization. Now, I first became interested in Planet X when I observed that the sky was pink close to the horizon at sunset. And this was in 2016, and at the time I was still living in South Africa. And pink in the sky at sunset, whether as a part of the color of a cloudless sky or as the color of clouds, was impossible in terms of my understanding of how light from the sun works in the Earth's atmosphere. This understanding is based in what makes up light and the understanding that the sun emits white light whilst the Earth's atmosphere acts as a filter for that light. And this understanding then explains why the sky is blue and the sun is yellow. So this diagram here represents Newton's additive theory of light and he experimentally determined this theory and it's been extensively verified over hundreds of years now. So light is made up of three different main frequency bands which we perceive as color, red, green and blue. Blue is the most energetic or the higher frequency light and the sun emits all three. So it emits white light which is a combination of all three colors. Now the atmosphere which you see represented here, so this this is the Earth's atmosphere, this is the surface of the Earth here. So here we would have the sun, it looks yellow here because the background is white, but it represents a white sun emitting white light. When the white light hits the atmosphere, the atmosphere filters out the blue light, which then seems to be coming from everywhere in the atmosphere, so the sky looks blue. And then the light that is coming from the sun, directly from the sun, will look yellow. So this is represented by this orangey-yellow arrow down here. And this is when the sun is high in the sky. So it goes through a smaller portion of the atmosphere than it does when it's close to sunset. As you can see, there's a much longer length of atmosphere the light goes through here. And when it goes through more atmosphere, more of the light is filtered out. So the atmosphere starts filtering out or scattering green, the green frequency of light as well. You can see green arrows here. So it filters out all the blue. So there's no blue left in the light coming directly from the sun. And it starts filtering out green and eventually starts even filtering out some red. So the sun at that time looks very red, actually it looks orange, and the sky looks more and more white. And this that is what I understood, what my education taught me, that was supposed to happen. But the pink sky is thus impossible because what we would have to have in order to have a pink sky is that the sun is not emitting any green light. As you can see here, pink is a combination of red and blue as determined by Newton, no green. If we add green, then we get white. So in order to have pink, we have only red and blue, which means the green is missing. But the sun still looks orange or it still looks yellow, a bit more orange. In order to have orange, what we have to have is a combination of red and green. And then we get the yellow, and if we have a little bit more red than green, we get orange. So at this time, the sun looks orange, so we know it's emitting green light. But then we have pink in the atmosphere that is only possible if there is an absence of green light. So this is a contradiction and therefore impossible. So when I observed that, I realized that I was observing something that was impossible. 
So at that point, knowing that this was impossible, I began searching for answers. And I thought that perhaps an object outside the Earth's atmosphere was emitting pink light and causing the phenomenon, and thus began researching the phenomenon of Planet X. Now, I had learned that Planet X was connected with cataclysmic effects that led to the end of civilization on Earth, leaving few survivors to begin it again. It supposedly caused this end and restart of civilization to happen over and over again at intervals of between 3,600 and 12,000 years. I thus began to investigate whether Planet X was now here and in the process of causing another civilization reset on the Earth. And then in the process of investigating all the observational evidence I could find and through the application of logical deduction based on those observations, I began piecing together the story behind Planet X and getting answers as to what Planet X really is. I found out that indeed Planet X is behind the cataclysms that result in the end and restart of civilization, but that it is not a single object that comes through the solar system every 5,000 years, for instance. Planet X is many celestial objects. It is the remnant of planets and stars that were once a part of inhabited star systems within the galaxy and on which the cycle of death and rebirth of civilization and life itself began to occur. The remnants of one star system then being used to create the same cycle in other star systems. Now, in order to reach this conclusion, I had to first deduce that much of the physics I learned in my training as a physicist was wrong. For instance, physical theory explaining the formation of stars and planets is focused on gravity pulling matter together toward the central point and thus colliding and coalescing into larger objects. But in fact, observational evidence shows that the opposite occurs. Galactic nuclei eject matter that eventually turns into daughter galaxies. So this is what's shown in this diagram. This is a galaxy. This is its nucleus. It's called an active galactic nucleus. It's extremely bright, emits a lot of gamma rays, and it ejects quasars along its axis of rotation, or its minor axis. So this would be the galaxy, this would be the core of the galaxy, and what you see here is a daughter galaxy at the end of its arm, because galaxies can actually eject along the major axis as well, and this is how they populate the body of the galaxy. These are all ejected material that turns into stars, and that happens along the major axis of the galaxy. And you can see as it rotates, it's ejecting here. And because it's rotating, this turns into a spiral arm. So, and this was discovered by Halton Arp, and this is, I've referenced here, his book, Seeing Red, where he details all these observations, and he observed high redshift quasars, so these are actually proto-galaxies, on either side of low redshift galaxies. So this would be a low redshift object, this would be high redshift object. And these, he observed them sometimes still connected by a dust trail to them. This is basically what we have here, although this, this ejection was along the major axis. So in the plane of rotation of the galaxy, it's close to the end of that arm there, a daughter galaxy. He thus showed that redshift is related to the age of matter. The younger the matter, because it's been newly created, the higher the redshift and not to distance from the Earth. And with that, he falsified the Big Bang model. So in other words, the universe is not expanding. 
and do not explode into existence as the Big uh, as the Big Bang model says it did. Matter is simply being continuously created from within galactic cores. Then the logical progression of what Arp deduced based on his observations is that galactic nuclei eject galaxies and stars that go on to make up the body of the galaxy, and in turn, stars eject planets, whilst all planets and stars create their own bodies and atmospheres from within. Now, I directly observe that within the Earth, there are cores that create matter, such as sand and rock. Within each planet, star, or galactic nucleus, there is a system of cores surrounding a central core that grow and multiply, much like animals do, and they communicate with each other through energy exchange. This communication with energy is in the form of the type of matter that each creates. Cores have energy within, or light, which they convert to matter, and that's how they communicate. Cores that are a part of the Earth's core system and have emerged to the surface can actually be observed on Earth. And here are some examples. These are called trevants. These are sort of a spheroid kind of rocks. And they are cores and they grow. And these rocks grow and reproduce because they are cores. They are actually alive. The, the cores of a planet reproduce, they grow into larger and larger families. And that shows that they are, are living beings. They grow by creating circular bubbles, which you see here on the surfaces. And you can see these bubbles here. And here's another example. This is a Travant, and you can see its babies that grow out of the larger one. And once they reach a certain size, the small travants seem to break off the parent and become independent travants. And then they grow their own babies. They reproduce. They are alive. Planets and stars are alive because they have these cores within. And here's an earth soil creating core which emerged from the ground in a property in California. And this is all detailed in one of my books, book 13, entitled Planet X Reveals That the Universe is Alive. So Planet X is the remaining core systems of the once inhabited planets in the galaxy. And through energy exchange process uh, between cores, these remnants of planets and stars are used to produce effects on Earth, which we observe as storms, earthquakes, and volcanic eruptions. These effects, in their most extreme examples, are cataclysmic and civilization ending. I'll However, Planet X does not randomly attack a star system and begin producing civilization resets. Planet X is connected to the destroyer, the being who initiated the death and rebirth cycle within the galaxy. Planet X is often referred to as the destroyer, but it is not the destroyer. Planet X is actually a tool in the hands of the destroyer. So in conclusion, Planet X are the remaining cores of planets and stars. Planet X is linked to the end of civilization that the Earth now seems close to experiencing, as suggested by the observed increase in extreme weather, earthquakes, volcanic eruptions, and the march toward nuclear war between divided peoples on the planet. Planet X is the tool in the hands of the destroyer, the being who is responsible for the civilization reset cycle commencing in the galaxy and now occurring on the Earth. This is Dr. Claudia Albers, Planet X researcher. Thank you for watching.